Okay. So Izzy has left me. I guess we weren't interesting enough for her. So I'm minus a cat now. It's okay. <clears throat> okay. So after you've watched that video there, you get really, way better graphics than I can do uh, in any reasonable amount of time. And it's already done. It's out there on the internet. It's free. So let's, let's use that. Okay. Citric acid cycle summary occurs in the mitochondria. Two pyruvates come in with three carbons each. They have to lose a carbon to enter the cycle, um, bind with a coenzyme A, and now they go through the cycle. Throughout the cycle, they'll lose two more carbon dioxides. They'll produce a little bit of ATP as they do that, but really the important thing is they're going to produce NADH and FADH2, which I don't remember the technical names for those, what they that actually represents. We can look that up if we need that. Um, now, why is that important? Well, because it enables the other parts of this process of breaking down the glucose to actually occur. That NADH and those FADH2s carry lots of energy because they picked up high energy electron bonds. They're carrying lots of energy to other parts of this process. And this is going to, I put this together roughly. I used this image from your book and I incorporated glycolysis in here and so then after that, we move into the mitochondrial membrane. This is a mitochondria here. Move in the mitochondrial membrane, bind with the COA, enter the citric acid cycle. The citric acid cycle puts out these high energy carriers, NADH and FADH2. And that goes into then a process we call the electron transport chain. So the electron transport chain, I'm not going to talk a lot about the individual components here. That is in your text in detail. They talk about what all of these, um, this one step, one step, two, step three, step four, it talks in detail what those are and how they work. What I want you to understand is each of these, uh, they strip a hydrogen off of these high energy carriers or strip multiple hydrogens off and they push it out into the space outside the, or just basically in between the layers of the mitochondria, it traps a bunch of hydrogen in there. Okay, so the electron transport chain, the ETC, uses energy stored in these high energy NADH, FADH to pump or forcibly move hydrogen ions across the membrane. This creates a gradient, which if the membranes were not selectively permeable, those, uh, those gradients, the hydrogen would just spontaneously move back into the mitochondria. But because the membrane of the mitochondria is selectively permeable to these hydrogen ions, we now create this gradient of hydrogen or protons on in between the layers. And what we can use, do, do then is use this buildup of hydrogen that occurs out in between the layers, in between the membranes of the mitochondria. We get all this hydrogen builds up in here and that sets up this potential. And it basically, it builds up a bunch of potential energy that another part of the mitochondria is going to use to generate ATP. We'll talk about that in just a second. <clears throat> now, one thing to mention, this is the point where we require oxygen. This is why we require oxygen. Um, we have an aerobic reaction. So anaerobic is where we don't need oxygen. This part of the process, the electron transport chain, we incorporate oxygen that our bodies pull in from the atmosphere and diffuse into our cells. And so it can make its way into the mitochondria. The mitochondria needs that oxygen to actually carry out this process where um, so free floating hydrogen ions within the mitochondria will now using this enzyme right here, this enzyme will force one of these oxygen atoms to bind with two hydrogens and generate water. And that removes more hydrogen ions from inside the mitochondria, meaning there's even higher concentration now of hydrogen ions outside as opposed to inside. And so this, through this process, we move electrons from one of these proteins to the next. And eventually we have enough electrons. We slap those electrons on the oxygen and the oxygen now is going to attract two hydrogens to it because the oxygen is too negative. It'll pick up two positive hydrogens and that's water. So we turn, this is where we're consuming oxygen and turning it into water. 